All right, we'll get started in just one more minute here. Make sure everybody has a moment to get on. And if anybody else wants to turn their cameras on, um, it's always fun to see uh, the kids out there. It uh, looks like Mrs. Jones's class is uh, really getting excited. Yeah, I'm seeing some good dance moves going on in that classroom. That's that's good. We we like dancing here at the <laughs> Adopt a Species program studios. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's about time to get started. What do you think? I think we should probably get started. Okay. Hello, Bradley. My name is Corey, and I work at Montana Wild in Helena. My name is Matt, and uh, I work at the Montana Discovery Foundation with the Forest Service, also here in Helena. And welcome to your Adopt a Species Virtual Assembly. Okay, Matt, not again. Matt! Sorry, Corey. Okay. I just get so excited uh, about Adopt a Species and you pick such great music. I know. You, you know, <laughs> this year uh, we're doing these virtual assemblies for the second time and I'm super excited. You know, there's so many great uh, Montana animals to learn about. Um, gosh, we have like wolverines and bears. And otters and owls. And, and tigers and sharks. <laughs> No, no, Matt. This is just about Montana animals. Right. That's a that's a good point. Um, maybe we should tell the students um, what Adopt a Species is all about. Yeah, Adopt a Species is the best. It's a habitat education program that's been going on for 25 years. And it teaches students just like you at Radley about Montana animals and the habitats or homes that they rely on. Yeah, you know, I love learning about habitats. And me too. Ever since last year, I've been learning so much about habitats that I even learned a song about habitats. Matt, I also learned a song about habitats. Really? Do you think we learned the same song? I think there's a good chance we learned the same song. Do you do you think that the kids uh, at Radley might also know this song about habitats. Do you guys know any songs about habitats? Raise your hand if you know a song about habitats. <gasps> I wonder if they learned the same song. Let should we sing it and find I, out? I think we should all uh, all sing together. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> if you know this song, I hope you'll sing along. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> The ocean is a habitat, a very special habitat. It's where the deepest water's at. It's where the biggest mammal's at. It's where our future food is at. Keeps the atmosphere intact. The ocean is a habitat that we depend on. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Have to have a habitat to carry on. Hey, we sound pretty good. We do. Do you have a favorite habitat, Matt? I think my favorite habitat has got to be the forest. Ooh. The forest is a habitat, a very special habitat. It keeps the ground from rolling back. It's where all the biggest things are at. <laughs> Uh, the forest is a habitat. Let me start that over. Let's start forest that over. Is a habitat, a very special habitat. It's where the biggest trees are at. It's there where a bear can scratch his back. It keeps the ground from rolling back. It keeps the aquifers intact. The forest is a habitat that we depend on. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Have to have a habitat to carry on. Ooh, Ooh you saved it there. You know my favorite habitat? What's your favorite habitat? The river. Nice. Want to sing us a little bit about rivers? Yes. The river is a habitat, a very special habitat. It's where the freshest water's at for people, fish, and muskrats. When the people dump their trash, the river takes the biggest rap. River is a habitat that we depend on. 
Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Have to have a habitat to carry on. People are different from foxes and rabbits. We affect the whole world with our bad habits. Better to love it while we still have it. Or at a tat tat, our habitat's gone. A habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Habitat, habitat, have to have a habitat. Have to have a habitat to carry on. Wow, we sounded pretty good. It, it looked okay. like the kids out there were doing pretty good too. Yeah, absolutely. And let me tell you, I could sing about habitats all day. They are so important and it's where animals can find all of the food, water, shelter, and space that they need. Yeah, and you know, that's what we're gonna be uh, talking about for this year's theme. Yeah. Um, should we tell them about this year's theme for yeah. adoptive species? The theme of this year's adoptive species is Habitat, Habitat Hunters. Hunters. So you are all going to be learning about habitats. But you know, I have to tell you, Matt, I'm especially excited about the theme because I have been studying to become a wildlife real estate agent. A wildlife real estate agent. Corey, what does that even mean? Well, it means that I'm going to try to find the perfect home or habitat for every animal in Montana. Huh. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because I actually have a few animal friends um, that are looking for new places to live. Do you think you can help them? Oh my gosh, send them in. I want to meet them. All right, I'll go get go them. Go get them, go get them. Oh my gosh, my first wildlife real estate clients Got to get my blazer on here. Look a little bit professional. <clears throat> okay, send in the first client, please. Oh my gosh, it's a buffalo. Actually, I'm a bison. Oh, my name's Bill. Sorry, Bill the bison. Thank you so much for trusting me with all of your habitat needs. We're going to start with a few questions, okay? Okay. Now you look pretty large. I'm assuming you're going to need a lot of space. Oh yeah. I need a lot of room to roam. Hmm. Okay. Let me look at some recent listings here. A lot of space. Oh, this property has so much space and gorgeous views. I call this Ocean View Estates. Hmm. Corey, do I look like I can swim? Okay, maybe not. Not a good swimmer. I'll make a note. Okay, well, let's talk about food. What's your favorite food? Do you like to eat plants? Oh, yeah. Plants is about all that I eat, and I'm a big boy, so I need to eat a lot. Sometimes I eat 11 hours a day. Oh, my gosh, that is a lot of plants. Okay, let's see. Oh, you cannot find more plants anywhere than here. The jungle, this treetop treehouse in the rainforest. What do you think? Mm, I don't think I could climb up there with my hooves. And there's a lot of trees there. And I'm, I'm not really a big fan of too many trees. Besides, I'd like to stay here local. And I don't think there's any jungle in Montana. Okay, so not too many trees, lots of space. Let's see. Oh, I know. The grasslands. I call this one Prairie View Acres. It has your name written all over it, Bison. Ooh, now that's more like it. Well, that's the kind of place that bison like me have lived for thousands of years. I'd love to get back to my grassy roots. Well, I do have a note here that the weather can get pretty severe and there's not much shelter out there. Is that going to be okay with you? Oh, well, I'll be moving in with my very large family called a herd. And, uh, you know, when the weather gets rough, we just huddle together for warmth. And besides, I've got a nice thick coat, so... I take my shelter with me where I go. Well, this will be perfect. I'll give the paper we're going and we'll get you out on the grasslands before you know it. That sounds good. 
Well, I guess I better go pack up to hit the old dusty trail. Yes, my first happy Habitat client. Send in the next client, please. Hey, I know you. You're a beaver. Yeah, we got a wise guy here. Hello, Mr. Beaver. How are you today? Are we going to make small talk all day? I'm busy. I got a lot of work to do, huh? Okay, busy as a beaver. I understand. Let's cut right to it. So uh, what's your favorite food? I thought we were here to talk real estate, not eats. What's food got to do with it? Well, I need to know what you like to eat so you can live next to your favorite food and restaurants. I, I see. Well, I am a vegetarian, an herbivore, you might say. No junk food for me. Got to stay strong and healthy to build all those dams. Okay, herbivore, noted. Now, yeah, tell me about your work. What's with these dams you build? Ay, ay, ay. You know, the dams are essential for us beavers. It backs up water, allows us to build our shelters, keep our food underwater, and it keeps us safe from predators like, like coyotes and mountain lions. You know, we work hard, but we also work smart. See? Ooh, waterfront property. I love it. So let me make sure I have this all straight. You, um, I'm thinking anywhere near a river, lake, stream would be good habitat for you. You're going to be with a big group, so you'll need a lot of square footage. Um, you eat vegetation, so trees and shrubs are a must. And am I correct? You're just looking to buy property. You're going to be doing all the building yourself, right? Absolutely. Once we find the perfect space, but me and my boys will get to work. You know, when we construct our dams, we add a lot of value to the neighborhood. Fish and birds and even moose come to me when they want a cool place to live. I'm kind of a big deal. Wow, my other clients will be thrilled to hear about this development. All right, are we done here? I got to go uh, repair a retaining wall on my Seven Mile Creek property. Yes, we're done. Thank you so much, Beaver. We'll be in touch. Perfect. Catch you later, kid. Wow, I think I have some happy first clients. Hi, Matt. Hi, Corey. You know, I just saw my friends outside and they're thrilled. It sounds like you're learning a lot about the wildlife real estate business. I sure am. You, like we said, you have to think about all of the food and water and shelter that these animals need and their adaptations. Yeah, and that's what we're going to be asking all of you to do uh, with this year's Habitat Hunters theme. You're going to have to ask a lot of the same questions that Corey did in order to design the perfect habitat for your species. Yeah, it won't always be easy. You'll have to do some good research, ask some good questions, but people like your teachers and librarians and me and Matt are here to help you. You know, something I was thinking about, Corey, uh, while I was um, outside is Last year, I remember you brought in um, this really cool live bird uh, to share with the students. Do you have a live bird this year? I do not have a live bird this year. Man, the kids are going to be so disappointed. I'm so sorry, kids. But you know what I did bring? A different native Montana animal. Whoa. What's you Wow, good dance moves out there, Radley. Are you guys all ready to see what Montana animal I brought? Raise your hand if you want to meet a Montana animal. Oh boy, okay. Like they do. This year I brought a snake. Ooh, a snake. Yes, this is a native Montana snake called a rubber boa. Wow. That's yeah. pretty different. It is pretty different. And you know what? It gets its name rubber because it has really tiny scales that make it look and feel really smooth, almost like rubber. And boa because it's one of two native boa constrictors in the United States. Whoa. So we have a boa constrictor right here in Montana. Can you believe that? I, that's really cool. I didn't know that. Do you know what the word constrictor means? Hmm. I think it has something to do with uh, the way they hunt, right? Yes. So if everybody squeezes their arm, that's constricting, right? So mm -hmm. that's how they kill their prey is they squeeze their prey. They constrict it and then they swallow it whole. Ooh, that's pretty scary. Yeah. So 
Corey, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous uh, being this close to a snake. I'm not going to lie. Um, this particular uh, snake is not poisonous, right? That's right. So we have 10 species of snakes in Montana, and only one of those is venomous. Do you know which snake in Montana is venomous? If you know out at Radley, tell your classmates, which snake is venomous in Montana? Do you know, Matt? Is it a king cobra? No, it's not a king cobra. I'll give you a clue. If you're walking along, it might warn you with a little... Ooh, I know, rattlesnake. Yeah, so yeah. rattlesnake is the only venomous snake in Montana, so you do have to be very careful with them. But most of our other snakes are pretty harmless. It doesn't mean you should go picking them up, um, but a lot of them are constrictors, and again, only one is venomous. So wow, yeah. So since we're here talking about habitats, um, what kind of habitat would the uh, rubber boa need? Ooh, great question. So first of all, its favorite food is mice and rodents. So it would definitely need to live in a habitat that had. Oh, she's looking at you. Yeah. That has lots of rice, mice, and rodents. Um, so she also really likes to find dark places to hide from predators. And so she would love to go under a rock or a big rotten log. So a habitat that has a lot of those features would be important too. Oh, so we, once again, we got to have like food and water and shelter, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So Corey, I know something about snakes. Um, and I have heard that they are cold blooded. Yes. Is is that true? And, and what does that mean? Yes. So she is cold blooded or ectothermic. So that means she is always the same temperature as her surroundings. So in her habitat, she would be able to find places to stay warm and to cool down. So if she's feeling a little cold, she might slither onto a big flat rock where she can soak up some sun and warm up. Or if she's too hot, she might want to go under a rock or some leaves or um, down a rodent burrow even so she can cool down. Oh, okay. So, you know, considering that these snakes are cold blooded and uh, it gets pretty cold here in Montana, especially in the wintertime. Yeah. How would a rubber boa survive uh, when it's like 20 below outside? That's another great question. So she hibernates. So she yeah. would go down into, a again, a rodent burrow or under some leaf litter where she can stay just above freezing, but she'll slow her body down. She won't eat at all or move for months in the winter to conserve that energy at times when there's not much prey around for her to find and when she would be way too cold since she is cold-blooded after all. That's very cool. Yeah. So I'm going to get up close to show you one more adaptation. So let me see if I can get the camera focused in on her. So we talked about her favorite food is rodents. So if you look at her right here, you can see that her head and her tail look really similar. Here's her tail right here and here's her head. You can hardly tell which is which. So what she'll do is she'll slither down into rodent burrows and she will flick at the mama mouse with her tail. So the mom will be distracted and attack the tail and she'll gobble up the baby mice um, with the other end. So it sounds really sneaky, but that's super important to us because we don't want tons and tons of mice running around Montana. They sometimes eat our crops and they can spread disease. So she's really important to Montana. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna give you a few minutes. Teachers, if you wanna put any questions students have in the chat, we'll stop talking for a couple of minutes, let you put some questions in the chat and then we'll answer as many as we have time for. So go ahead and put some questions in the chat. Right, we'll give you 20 more seconds because I see so many good questions coming in.
Okay, let's see what questions we have. So the first question I see is how old is she? So great question. She's 18 years old, believe it or not. She's older than all of you. And she could live to be 50 or 60. So she's still got a long ways to go. Um, yeah, average lifespan, 50 to 60 is, is the oldest they can get. Um, are all rubber boas brown? Great question. No, sometimes they're black and sometimes they can be this beautiful orangey coral color. Um, so they can come in a few different colors. Her name is Sophie. Uh, somebody in Finstad's class wants to know how long can it grow? Well, she's currently 21 inches, but she's still growing a little bit. They're one of the smaller snakes in Montana, but they can get to be up to about 26 inches. So she might get a little bit bigger yet. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we've got here. I can't believe how many good questions we have. Um, well, I think there's a question. What did you, did you say the name? Sophie. Yeah. Sophie. Her name's okay. Sophie. Someone wants to know, are there bull snakes in Montana? Yes, there are bull snakes. That's our wow. biggest snake we have in Montana. Sometimes people call them gopher snakes, but they can get really long, like six or seven feet. So they're a lot bigger than Sophie is. Um, she is from right here in Helena. A biologist found her 18 years ago and knew she would be a really good ambassador for her species to teach folks just like you about snakes and how important they are. So you can't go out and just take a wild animal out of the wild and make it a pet. It's against the law, actually. But since she's such a great educational ambassador, um, we use her for education programs and she does a very good job, as you saw. Um, okay, these are such good questions. Let's see. Can this, how often does she shed? So she sheds in the summer when she's really active and eating a lot. She'll shed once or twice a month. Uh, but in the winter, even though she's not out in the wild, starting in the next week or two, she'll stop eating until March. So she goes into a little bit of a torpor, almost into hibernation and slows down her body. And then she won't shed hardly at all during the winter. Okay, let's see. I think I have time for two more questions. And if I don't get to your question, you can always send me and Matt an email or a letter and we'll answer your questions for you. So let's see. A lot of questions about how old they are and their color. Uh, there's 10 different snakes in Montana. Um, again, they can be big or small. Uh, we have one venomous snake. Um, and how does she put rodents in her mouth? That's a good question too. Yeah. So again, she's a constrictor. So she'll squeeze and squeeze a rodent. So it's not squirming around and that makes it a little easier for her to eat. And then snakes can actually dislocate their jaw a little bit so they can open up their mouth really wide. And then they always swallow their prey whole. So they don't bite it up in pieces like we might do. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Those were great questions, you guys. I can tell you're going to be good habitat hunters already. Yeah, I think so. Well, that was a really cool snake. Thanks for bringing that, Corey. Of course. And thank you uh, out there um, for letting us come and be a part of your uh, school day today. Um, we had a lot of fun teaching you um, about different kinds of animals and their habitats. And I think that's about all the time we have, right? We haven't even told them what their adopted species is. That's right. All right, Corey. So I was thinking that since you are such a great um, wildlife real estate mogul, that maybe I could give you a few clues and see if you can guess what their adopted species is. Okay. Give me a couple of clues. So mm. hmm, where do they like to hang out? Ooh, well, they can pretty much hang out all over uh, Montana. Well, that doesn't help me very much. Hmm. Hmm. What do they like to eat? Ooh, they are pretty much carnivores and... Um, you know, a wolf. Mm, no, think smaller. They like to eat rodents. Ooh, a snake. Hmm, closer, but... This species is not a reptile, and also you might only see them a certain time of the day, and actually more like at night. A nocturnal species? 
I know just what it is. What is it? Do you think we should tell them? I think that they should know. That's the whole point. Okay, this year, your adoptive species is Montana, Montana owls. I love owls. There's 15 different species you can find in Montana. So that's pretty amazing. You guys are going to have a lot of research to do. Yeah, like I said, they live in almost every kind of habitat. So do you think all of those 15 species of owls like the same exact habitat? Mm, probably not probably not yeah. so i'm very excited to see what you all come up with and how you approach your habitat hunters adopt a species project yep and um later on this year we'll be looking for all of those great uh art and writing submissions so that you can teach us all the cool things that you learned all right well thank you so much radley we had so much fun hanging out with you and let us know if you need any help with your adopt a species projects we'll see you later bye guys the ocean is a habitat a very special habitat it's where the deepest water's at it's where the biggest mammals at it's where our future food is at it keeps the atmosphere intact the ocean is a habitat that we depend on a habitat habitat have, have a habitat habitat special habitat. It's where the biggest trees are at. It's where American scratches back. It keeps the ground from rolling back. Renews the aquifers. In fact, the forest is a habitat that we depend on.